Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous spring morning here in the end times in paradise at East Bumblefuck, New Mexico on this Tuesday morning, May 16th. 17th, 2017, I believe. So anyway, Tuesday is when uh, your old clueless moron Luddite heads over to the mainstream media science pages to look in at what our favorite wacky mad scientists and techno-utopians and all of those guys are up to trying to figure out what is going on on this planet and sharing what they have learned with us clueless moron Luddites and uh, so we're just gonna dive right in it's a mixed bag on the science pages today just just a few of the stories that caught my attention and I'm gonna have to uh, uproot the little dog all right take it away mainstream science pages and of course I always like to begin my Tuesday rant, checking in with uh, those favorite wacky billionaires. This would be Bill Gates. What is Bill Gates up to this week? I guess <coughs> he's giving commencement addresses <coughs> in which he says, <coughs> Bill Gates says humanity is getting better. Humanity is getting better. Yes. So I guess he, this is a commence, commencement speech. Some uh, quotes from it. Uh, I don't even know. It really doesn't matter where he's going to be giving this thing. Okay. <clears throat> a few of the highlights. The philanthropist. The philanthropist revealed the fields he would study if he was enrolling in college. Now, quote, artificial intelligence, energy, and biosciences are promising fields where you can make a huge impact. It's what I would do if starting out today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, let me go. Gates said he is optimistic, optimistic about the younger generation. Quote, you know more than I did when I was your age, he said. Yes, any person in the younger generation uh, taking a tiny peek of the outside of their own rectums knows a hell of a lot more than Bill Gates. They, they know they're fucked. They're absolutely fucked. Could you imagine being uh, like a college student in the year 2017? Jesus Christ. Don't get me going on that one. <clears throat> but most importantly, Gates believes the world is getting better. He recommended a book, I need to read this book, by Harvard cognitive scientist Steven Pinker titled Better Angels of Our Nature, which explains why violence in the world has declined. Getting back to Bill, quote, S.A. Pinker shows how the world is getting better. Sounds crazy, but it's true. This is the most peaceful time in human history. Gates said knowing the world is getting better will make you want to, quote, spread the progress to more people and places. This is an amazing time to be alive. I hope you make the most of it. This is an amazing time to be alive. I will not, uh, yes, being the, particularly if you're 20 years old, 
Uh, you are in the last generation of humans on this planet. I would say that's a pretty amazing time to be alive. The final uh, generation. Anyway, we're going to look at a couple of stories about God meets science. <clears throat> From Newsweek magazine, does God exist? Some scientists think they have the proof. Okay, take it away, Newsweek. This is from a fellow named uh, Robert Nelson, some scientist, scientist Robert Nelson. Take it away, Robert. <clears throat> the question of whether a God, a small period God, the, the question of whether a God exists is heating up in the 21st century. According to a recent Pew survey, the percent of Americans having no religious affiliation reached 23% in 2014. Uh, among such nuns, 33% said they do not believe in God, an 11% increase since only 2007. It's not looking good for God. And the year 2017, not looking good for God. God's not on a roll. But uh, anyway, such trends have ironically been taking place even as I would argue the probability for the existence of a supernatural God have been rising. In my 2015 book, God? Very probably. Five rational ways to think about the question of God. I look at physics, the philosophy of human consciousness, evolutionary biology, mathematics, the history of religion, and theology to explore whether such a God exists. And then he breaks it all down through the laws of mathematics. This is a long, long involved article. The mystery of human consciousness, evolution and faith miraculous ideas, different forms of worship. Uh, and I'm going to close with his final... Robert Nelson, by the way, is a professor of public policy at the University of Maryland. So towards the bottom of his article, he moves from religion in general to Christians. Christians. That the, this is the final paragraph of his uh, treatise here. That the Christian essence as arose out of Judaism showed such great staying power amidst the extraordinary political, economic, intellectual, and other radical changes of the modern age is another reason I offer for thinking that the existence of God is very probable. Yeah, the the uh, the unbelievable staying power of the Christian essence. I think if you a good example of that, you just have to go to the White House to look at our Christian president, Donald Trump. Uh, as a how many times do I need to say it? If you need to look embodied in one individual, the single most anti-Christian, pro-death and destruction uh, human being on the planet, it would be Donald Trump, that, uh, that uh, life-loving president of ours. Anyway, I'm going to let you draw the dots between that article to this one right next to it. <clears throat> Damage to a specific site in the brain may be linked to religious fundamentalism. Psychologists have always been fascinated as to why some people believe in a higher being, 
while others are happy to accept that we are alone in life. New research claims they have found a region of the brain that, when damaged, may increase the likelihood that a person will hold fundamental religious beliefs. In particularly, they found that damage to this region reduced cognitive flexibility, the ability to challenge one's pre-existing beliefs when presented with new evidence. And uh, it's too bad this gets, uh, again, gets pretty technical pretty quick getting down to the bottom. Just a disclaimer, just a disclaimer, this new research does not mean that forming a religious belief is down to some form of brain damage <laughs> or, or that trauma to the head will therefore lead to fundamentalism. The researchers simply state that damage to this particular part of the brain may make it more difficult for a person to assess their own deep-seated beliefs when presented with new evidence. And then they recommend, now watch this video. The Marine Corps is testing a machine gun wielding robot controlled with just a tablet and a joystick. Da, da, da. Okay, how about all of this advice about living in the present? So I guess this is maybe directed at the Buddhist in us. The, neuro, the neuroscience argument against living in the present. There are plenty of advice columns, self-help books, and loosely spiritual 20-somethings <laughs> devoted to extolling the virtues of living in the present. The advice is intended as an antidote to life spent scrolling absent-mindedly through Twitter or planning next weekend while failing to appreciate each momentary experience. While it is certainly well-meaning, the catchphrase alone offers limited guidance. After all, a life spent entirely dedicated to making sure the present moment is enjoyable would never go anywhere. For example, no one would subject themselves to New York's subways. <laughs> now, there, there's a real argument uh, for not living. Uh, anyway, that, that, that's really something I would offer up as evidence for not living in the moment. <laughs> yes. And neuroscience suggests that while it may be unfashionable, humans' ability to mentally transport ourselves into the future is one of the key distinguishing features of our species. There you go. So this is kind of centering on UCLA behavioral neuroscience professor Dan Buono Mano uh, in his recently published book, Your Brain is a Time Machine. And then this is a review of this uh, talking about uh, it's not all bad to peek into the future. Well, it depends on, I guess, what your view of the future is. Anyone peeking into the future will come up uh, pretty quickly with the, uh, with the inescapable conclusion 
So uh, if, you know, if, if knowing we are so fucked is a good thing, then uh, I would suggest peeking into the future. I did, uh, I love this. <clears throat> Our more elaborate ability to envision the future is key to most human successes, such as building houses and cultivating agriculture. There you go. There, there's a couple of human successes. Building houses and cultivating agriculture. Yes. Uh, without this skill, Buonanamano says, Homo sapiens simply would not be sapiens. This ability to look into the future is what makes us wise. Uh, let's see. But while the ability to connect present activity with the future outcomes is uniquely human, we're not always good at this skill. And then he um, uh, talks about cigarette smoking, uh, failing the, the connection between cigarette smoking and cancer. And the fallout from climate change is another major example of humans failing to adequately focus on the future. Yes, somewhere he talks about, uh, where is it? Here we go. Not all future-oriented activities rely on this projection. Humans have hardwired habits just like all other animals. Sex, for example, has potentially significant future consequences. As Boonamanamanumineno says, we, quote, engage in fairly complex behaviors. Yes, like sticking our tallywhackers into soft, wet holes without thinking about what will happen nine months from now. Moving on. Okay, let's go in and see what's going on with these uh, techno-utopians heading to Mars. And why am I not surprised to read this, guys? Mars Voyage will include a one-year layover in Moon's orbit. The plan to send humans to Mars in the late 2020s includes a one-year layover in orbit around the Moon. You know, we haven't even fired off the first Amtrak train to Mars and already Already, we have a one-year layover on the fucking moon. You know, guys, have we not learned anything from Amtrak? <coughs> Darling, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a year late getting home to Mars because uh, we're hung up on the moon. Now, of course. I would be nervous about uh, being in the moon's orbit because, as I reported earlier, um, China will be blasting asteroids off into the orbit of the moon. Oh, and I love it when a, uh, when a headline asks a question, could this be the magical drug that makes old brains young again? Forget injecting yourself with young people's blood to fight aging. Damn it! I was all set to go inject myself with the blood of a clueless fucking moron youngster. Oh well, but don't worry, I'm off the hook because maybe marijuana will do the trick. Hallelujah! 
researchers from the University of Bonn in Germany explored the difference that THC, marijuana's main active ingredient, has on aging brains and younger ones. The results were surprising. <coughs> in the paper published in Nature Medicines, researchers went so far as to claim that low doses of THC can in fact restore cognitive function in old mice. They found marijuana improved the memory and learning abilities of elderly mice. Let's be clear, this study was conducted on mice. So the results cannot be definitively applied to humans. But the results of this study are a strong start in exploring how marijuana might affect our brains as we get older. All right, it's always good to see some positive news in the mainstream media science pages about marijuana, and it's not just marijuana, and you know, all kidding aside, uh, I'm glad to see the good old uh, mainstream media more and more uh, positive news about psychedelics. Psychedelics in the lab and clinic making up for lost time. And uh, anyway, this, what, what this is talking about a lot is how, uh, you know, psychedelic research and all of this shit was fine and dandy up until about the 1960s when this war on drugs uh, was declared and uh, and so you know all of these goddamn drugs including marijuana being a schedule one drug with quote no currently accepted medical use <coughs> You know, they they made it so goddamn hard uh, to even get your hands on a joint that uh, that all research into psychedelics just disappeared for about 50 years. But it's coming back as more and more studies are coming online uh, showing the beneficial effects of psychedelics. Scientists and clinicians uh, presented evidence from ongoing research suggesting that psychedelics have the potential to alleviate conditions that do not respond to conventional drugs and therapy, including depression, social anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorders, and addiction. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> much of the recent work with psychedelics picks up where early psychiatric pioneers left off, in many cases confirming what researchers had hypothesized but lacked the tools to test. And guys, uh, you know, how many times do I need to put this caveat in here <coughs> that, um, you, you know, it was psychedelics. It, it was mushrooms. It was San Pedro cactus, which is the same as peyote, and ayahuasca, which is DMT, uh, the three psychedelics that I did heavy doses of in 2008 that pulled my head out of my ass and made me walk away from a $100,000 a year job, a beautiful four bedroom, three bath home, uh, 300 friends, don't forget pussy, uh, to become a doomsday prophet sitting in a dusty chicken coop in East Bumblefuck, uh, New Mexico. So there is a little bit 
of danger with psychedelics. And that is called, once you take the red pill of psychedelics, you're fucked. You will become a depressed collapsitarian. I am every bit as depressed, probably more depressed since doing psychedelics than I was just a depressed, clueless. I've gone from being a depressed, clueless fucking moron to being a depressed collapsitarian. I'm just, put, I'm just putting this out there, but I, this is not mean I'm not recommending psychedelics. I am recommending psychedelics to pull your head out of your fucking ass. You clueless fucking moron, but I uh, don't think it's it's all rosy out there. Anyway, <clears throat> from psychedelics to apple picking robots, <clears throat> meet this new apple picking robot. Inspired by immigrant workers in the U.S. who will likely soon become scarce. Abundant Robotics. Abundant Robotics created a robot to pick apples in the field. I didn't realize apples grew in fields. I thought apples grew in trees, but according to this guy, a robot that will pick field apples. The, the robot can identify, pluck, and place apples into a crate at a speed similar to that of human pickers. The robot pickers are currently being tested in Washington state, but the company expects to see these robots in orchards in the next few years. <clears throat> For more trending tech, you may be interested in these articles. This high-tech workout bag cleans itself. There is now an indoor potty for small dogs. Get out of your next traffic jam with this flying car. A self-driving car that can do your errands for you. Robot teaches kids as young as three years old to code. I have no idea what that means. Here is industrial robot technology may soon be in your home. How about wristband monitors your blood alcohol content while you drink? Here we go. Breast pumping moms can now go wireless. All right. Okay, your next food delivery order could come from a robot. You can now add cooking to the list of things Alexa can help you do. How about this anti-drone gun looks like it can do some serious damage. Here is how you can use your smartphone to get cash from your ATM. How about you may soon be able to use a drone to catch fish? Did you realize that sold out Snapchat sunglasses are already on eBay? How about this smart crib will help your baby sleep safely through the night? But probably the most important headline that I will get to next week, you can now cast Harry Potter spells from your smartphone. Anyway, just a couple of other uh, quick notes. Here is many versions of this eruption at one of the world's most dangerous supervolcanoes is closer than expected. One of the world's most dangerous supervolcanoes appears to be closer to erupting than we once thought, scientists have warned. This is 
volcano Campi Flagre in southern Italy has been showing signs of reawakening over the past 67 years and new research indicates the volcano has been building energy throughout this period increasing the risk that it will erupt. The volcano last erupted in 1538. That was a little burp compared to the one 40,000 years ago which produced a super colossal eruption, kind of like uh, the biggie at Yellowstone. While it is impossible to predict exactly when a volcano will erupt, there are telltale signs. Hmm, yes. Okay, but we're going to close with is no shit, Sherlock. Get ready for a possible second wave of massive global cyber attack. Micro Windows users, brace yourself for a second wave of global cyber attack. And don't forget the third wave, the fourth wave, the fifth wave, the sixth wave. But anyway, me and the little dog got to wrap up this week's version of our mad scientist round up rant and get out there and get her done because I got 15 500 pound concrete blocks waiting outside in my rented monster truck and I gotta get out there and get her done to build my sustainably harvested cedar deck for the end times I will be back tomorrow with my weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant. Bye guys!